Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I had absolutely intended to build a lure for this week's video, and I have a design going. I won't show it to you, but I'm going to get to that next week. This week I totally ran out of time, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to answer some questions about UV resin that I get uh, pretty often repeated, and I get them either in the comments here or uh, on Instagram and Facebook. And I try my best to answer those questions as concisely and informatively as I can, but often it's just a little too complex to really write down in a quick answer. So I thought I could take this opportunity and offer you guys a little more information, a little more insight on things like what kind of lights to use to set your resin, what sorts of resins I've been using, what sources I've been using to get my uh, UV resin, and whether you intend to use it the way I use it, which is for clear coating, for casting, for gluing, and for filling. I'm gonna give you a little bit of information at least to get you started. So if it's interesting to you, stick around. First of all, if you're using UV epoxy resin and you're watching this channel, you're probably wanting to use it to clear coat and protect the paint job on your lures, which is mostly what I do. Now the difference between using the UV resin and using a two-part resin is that the two-part resin has, well, two parts. And UV resin is a single part clear resin that allows you to apply it and then you catalyze the resin with a, an exposure to UV radiation. So that means that you have to have some kind of light source with UV radiation. So the sun will do it, but it takes a little longer. But you can also buy lamps that are designed exactly for this. But you gotta buy the right kind of lamp. And you have to use them correctly as well. So we'll go into lamps in a moment, but let me just talk about application. When you buy a tin of UV resin with this much volume, this is a quart, you have the option to dip your lure in it to apply the resin, which is not an option you have really with two-part resin. The drawback with dipping is that you have the added time and exposure that you have to dust and bugs and everything while you're dripping that excess resin off your lure. And you expose your precious can of UV resin, which is not cheap, to dust and bugs and anything you introduce into it, dust and bugs, with your lure itself. So it's not my preferred method. I prefer to brush on the resin with just a soft artist brush. And that means you won't be changing your method very much if you're going from two part to UV resin. But it also means you have to turn your lure so that the resin doesn't sag. But that also means that your turner has to be a combination lure turner and UV chamber or a location where your lights are, your UV lights are. So if you've been watching this channel, you know that I built this uh, years ago. And I actually put together a couple of videos of me building this and why I built it this shape and, and what components I actually used to make it. And I'll go ahead and link a playlist of everything I've done on UV resin down in the description. So check it out. There's lots of material in there and I've covered a lot of this information before with some pretty good detail and some examples as well. So this chamber, allows me to turn lures and expose them to the UV light all at the same time and I can close it and keep the dust and bugs out of there because that's another little bit of a pain that you have to deal with is that UV light is really attractive to every flying insect on the planet. So I'll be the first one to admit that this is a bit elaborate. This is very engineered angler kind of excessive but it works very well. The rounded shape helps reflect the UV rays back towards the center and makes the amount of wattage I have more effective. So before we get into the lights, let's talk about the resin itself. So I started off using UV resin from Alumalite, uh, Aluma, Aluma UV, I think it's called. And it's not cheap, but it's good quality stuff. And if it's all you can get a hold of, it's not a bad deal. I've transitioned to the less expensive, Chinese brand, and this is really meant for sort of the handicraft, putting coatings on everything from jewelry to photographs, but it works well and it's substantially less expensive. And I hate to be cheap, but you know, I'm just making lures as a hobby. I don't make money doing this. So I try to keep my costs down and I try to share that with you. And just to be clear, these are epoxy resins, but there are polyester resins. Solares makes this, and I used to use this back 
in the day when I was surfing in the middle of nowhere in Mexico or Central America and I bust a hole in my surfboard. It works really well in the sunshine. It has a very strong odor and it doesn't harden as hard as the epoxy. I always am experimenting with this stuff and I went out and bought this one gallon container of UV resin. This is typically used in the more industrial setting to protect uh, circuit boards and other electronics. And while it's really a lot cheaper to buy it by the gallon, it isn't if it doesn't work. And so this really was a $200 mistake for me. So I bought this from CureUV.com and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good quality product. It just isn't working well for the way I use it. I can still use it. I just have to make special preparations and use a little more intense light. And I'll put a link to where I got all this stuff uh, in the description as well. Now UV light can come in a lot of shapes and sizes and configurations. You can buy individual little LEDs like you see in this little UV pen. A spotlight like this little guy. But the price really can run the gamut. You can buy a little $15 spotlight or you can buy a $5,000 spotlight. It really is all about the wattage, how well controlled the wavelength of that light is. So you can see it's a 10 watt little LED spotlight and the wavelength is somewhere between 395 and 400 nanometers. Now you don't have to be an engineer to think about nanometers. It's just a value of the energy of that light, where it falls on the spectrum. And most UV resins that you can buy over the counter work best with a light that has a wavelength of somewhere between 365 and 395. And if you notice, this thing is on the tail end of that energy level. The higher you get in wavelength, the closer you get to visible light and is really a little less energetic and will set the resin a little slower. With this light, I'm using these fluorescent tubes. So check out the, the wavelength rating on this. So you can see it's 365, there's no range. Now, the less expensive you pay, in other words, the more you go for the cheapy Chinese stuff, the less controlled that wavelength uh, sort of range really is. And they may declare it's 365 and it may fall in the 365 to 380 range. Uh, and I'm no expert on it, but I, I've done some reading. And when you pay for the higher dollar lamps, you get a tighter control of uh, the kind of energy that's coming out of these bulbs. What I recommend is you go with 365. And you have to look a little bit, but you can find it. Go with 365 nanometers. It's a little more energetic. And while you might pay a little more up front, you, you can get away with a little less wattage. Which brings us to the next topic, wattage the amount of power that's actually being put out. This little guy puts out 10 watts. Each one of these bulbs puts out 9 watts. I've got four 9 watt bulbs in this chamber. But look at the size of this chamber. It's a lot of distance. And here's the key. Sort of light intensity of wattage density, some people call it. How close the item you're putting up next to the light, how close it is to the source of the light. Because the farther you move, from that source, the more diffuse that light gets and the less energy uh, per square inch you actually get on it per amount of time that it's exposed. I know it's a lot to take in, but just simply understand that the more wattage you can afford to apply onto your item that you're trying to set, the faster it's going to set and the more true it'll set, the harder it'll be. Now you can overdo it. Going to a wavelength much shorter than this gets you down into a much more energetic UV range, UVB, and I doubt anyone would get anything into the UVC. It'll set very quickly and become brittle, and sometimes it'll smoke and everything. The key here is to keep the lure as close to the source as possible and to try to make your chamber reflective on the inside so the light reflects back towards your lure or whatever it is you're using so there's less loss. All right, so let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting your finish. Typically, you wanna give your lure two coats if you're brushing it on. If you're dipping it, you can probably get away with one coat. Before you give the second coat, it's a very good idea to, at the very least, wipe it very thoroughly with denatured alcohol. 
that will remove the oils that naturally sort of come out of the resin itself. If you coat it directly over resin that just set, then you're likely to get some fish eyes. On the topic of fish eyes, if you're getting fish eyes right off the bat when you coat over your paint job, depending on the paint you're using, you may have a combination of paint and resin that is just never gonna work without some sort of mid coat. Now, I like using a mid coat all the time. I use water-based paints to do my painting and I use this Minwax polyacrylic and this is actually gloss but you don't have to use gloss you can use a matte finish. This is also a water-based product and I spray it on with my airbrush and to be able to spray it like that I thin it with 15% water by volume. Doing that has really made a huge difference. I almost never get any kind of fish eyeing or orange peeling or anything like that. The only time I get a flaw is when a piece of dust goes into it, one of the hairs comes off my brushes, or a fly goes into it. All right, before I close this video, I just wanted to show you this. I'm in the middle of a little bit of a production run of one of my favorite lures, actually the one I just showed you that I had recoded, and I wanted to know whether that would be interesting to you guys, whether you would like to see a video of how I order the process of making the components, putting them in the in the mold and casting them and then curing them. If you'd like to see that, let me know. Give me a comment in the comments. Yeah. If you think that would be a good topic for a video, let me know. Put it down in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. That concludes my quick lecture on UV resins. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. And for those of you who have reached out to me because you're having trouble getting your resin to set, what I would say to you is check to make sure you have at least 395 or shorter wavelength. And if you do, then up your wattage and get your lure closer to the source. That's really the key. I'm going to go ahead and pull the card out of that camera and take it up and start editing. And hopefully I'll have it done before too long tonight. And I'll have this ready for you guys to post tomorrow at 6 a.m. Thanks to everybody who's been watching. Thank you to everyone who's been commenting and asking questions and next week we'll be back to making lures something something like that it's going to be an experiment